Lord have mercy, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Koch here. And I'm here at Gear for Music in the UK. Lord have mercy, ladies and gentlemen, been traveling around Europe a little bit this week, and it's good to be up here causing trouble with our Fishman friends. And uh, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the acoustic stuff I'm using right now. It's what I use at home. And uh, I think you'll find it interesting. I think a lot of people um, that are more electric guitar players Maybe we're like myself and thought that getting a good acoustic sound live was something that just required too much money and too much time and too much uh, technical know-how to be able to pull off. And since I got involved with Fishman on the electric guitar front with the Fluence pickups, I started to get an entree into their glorious world of acoustic accoutrement, if you will. And doggone it, it's easy to just kind of grab a few of these things, plug them in and start playing and it sounds great. So maybe this will be your way of segueing from just being electric player live and do brandishing your acoustic guitar in a live format and letting your freak flag fly. Can you dig it? All right. Well, what I'm using right now, folks, <clears throat> of course, I've got a Martin guitar with um, an Aura system in it. And I'm gonna explain a little bit about what the Aura system does, because what happened was, is when I, as I said before, as I started working with Fishman on the Fluence uh, electric guitar pickups, they said, what are you doing for acoustic? And I said, well, I've got a Martin at home that I've had for years that I use for sessions. Uh, it's basically an HD28V, um, but I really didn't have anything for utilizing it in a live format other than just putting a mic in front of it. They said, well, we're gonna send you a Matrix Infinity pickup, which is what the, their flagship under the saddle pickup is. And we're gonna send you one of our Fishman Spectrum Aura DI uh, preamps. And that's this little accoutrement on the floor here, which has the Aura technology in it. And to just kind of explain what that does uh, without getting too crazy on the technical frontier, uh, to just give you a kind of a brief overview of what Fishman is all about. Larry Fishman himself uh, was a jazz bass player, jazz upright bass player. He, he went to school as an engineer uh, back in the day, got his engineering degree, moved to Boston, went to Berkeley for a hot minute and started playing gigs around the Boston area. And, um, was playing upright bass and couldn't hear himself at gigs. So he's like, holy cats, I think I'm gonna use my engineering background to come up with some kind of discombobulator and put it in my bass so I can hear what I'm doing. So he did. Came up with the, this first way of amplifying his first pickup for uh, upright bass. And then they became so popular, people were like, what are you doing to amplify your bass? He's like, well, I've made this thing. Other people wanted it, so on and so forth. It led to just a history of solving problems. And the biggest problem for acoustic instruments is trying to amplify them in a way that sounds natural and organic. <clears throat> because there's lots of reasons, physics-wise, why you can't just make a guitar sound like it does in a room with nice ceilings and just, you know, an acoustic guitar playing with the natural ear. It takes a little bit of, uh, let's just say that the technology is always evolving. So this Aura technology is another uh, huge step forward in adding uh, a degree of air around the notes in a way that is you can amplify things loudly to make them, but still make them sound like an acoustic instrument. Okay, so basically what it is, it's kind of like mic emulation technology. What they were able to do, there's a lot of MIT talent at, um, at Fishman, a lot of uh, software brainiacs as it were, certainly not my frontier, uh, but what they were able to do is come up with a program <clears throat> to be able to analyze the relationship of an acoustic instrument uh, with an iconic microphone in a room with uh, ceilings that are conducive to making music. <clears throat> and they were able to take like a snapshot of that particular relationship. So what they did is they went into a, a studio, they plugged in a guitar with a Matrix Infinity pickup in it, and they took like a Neumann mic or AKG, whatever iconic microphone you can imagine, several of them, as because there's several images that are available for each body type. Uh, type. And they took a Dreadnought guitar, <clears throat> And what they would do is they would just kind of go like this. And as they were doing this, they were capturing that relationship, those signals and, you know, whatever you want to, those uh, algorithms, if you will, on a computer program, and they were able to capture those. So that when you get this um, Aura Spectrum DI, you can then add, in addition to the sound of your under the saddle pickup, you can add an Aura image on top of it, and it just makes it sound uh, as I said, a little bit more air, a little bit more conducive to um, sounding like an acoustic instrument in the room. So I just want to show you real briefly, I can just kind of sequester the under the saddle pickup sound on this guitar. That's what this sounds like. But 
But on the on certain Martin guitars, they have the aura system built in. So now I can add, this is the first image. <laughs> Go back to the just the pickup. Here's the first image, aura mixed in with the bridge pickup. Here's another image you can choose from. So another microphone, another placement. And then there's a third one. Third one is what I was using for that opening piece because that's the one I like the best. So I don't know exactly what those three images are, but they're different microphones with different placements and so on and so forth to give you three different options of a balance between this aura image and the under the saddle pickup sound. And I was gratified to know that when I, when I use the aura system on the pedal and I just have the under the saddle option in my guitar itself, I usually add about 10 o'clock's worth on the rotary dial, um, uh, 10 o'clock's worth of the actual aura image to blend in with my under the saddle pickup sound. And that's apparently what the Martin and the Fishman people figured out was the most conducive for making it sound the most natural in when they actually hardwired it in their guitars. Um, so basically what I'm doing right now by scrolling through those three sounds, you actually have 13 different options on the actual Aura Spectrum DI for each body type. So on the there's a Dreadnought, there's a Orchestra, there's a Jumbo, and so on and so forth. And then there's nylon strings and so on and so forth. There's all the, there's 13 different options for body, uh, per body style that you can go between. It's got a three band EQ, and it's also got a compressor on board. I don't usually like to use compression when I'm playing electric guitar, because I just like to have a more, uh, a larger dynamic control. But I find on, I always kind of make the joke that when you're playing acoustic guitar, Compression adds a little bit of what I like to call talent to the scenario. It just kind of squeezes everything in such a way that uh, it just makes it a little easier to be uh, uh, dynamically, um, um, <laughs> let's just say it doesn't hurt the fingers as much. That's the bottom line. Uh, so it's a great device to have. This guitar makes it easy because it's all kind of on board in terms of, not the compressor, but certainly the aura images and the, and the pickup, and there's a tuner on board. Uh, but if you just have it under the, the Fishman uh, Matrix Infinity pickup, usually just has a volume and a tone underneath the, the top bow of the guitar. Uh, and the volume control functions as a regular volume control. Uh, with the Matrix Infinity pickup, the tone control actually is not like a conventional tone control where all the way to one side, it's like real murky and muddy, and then you turn it all the way to the other side and you just leave it there. Um, with it, one extreme side is just flat, and then when you go to the other extreme side, it's scooped. So the highs are higher and the lows are lower. So usually what I do is I go to the scoop side, and then go just a skosh to the other side to just kind of make it just a, a hair uh, warmer, if you will. Um, anyway, so amplifier-wise, right now I'm going into the Loudbox Performer. Uh, the Loudbox amps uh, are apparently the top-selling acoustic amps in the world, uh, and I can understand why. The Loudbox Mini is the uh, uh, top-selling acoustic amplifier. Uh, the Performer is the one I have because, of course, it's the loudest. <laughs> Is it wrong? You want to be able to hear yourself. This is a uh, 160 watts of biamped glory. Um, it's got two channels, um, a bunch of different things that are very, very cool about it. As you can see, or maybe you can't see, but maybe they'll close up on it. I just have the EQ flat on it. I have the gain for the channel at 12 o'clock. I have the EQ flat. It has an anti-feedback control on it. Uh, this is something <laughs> I needed to learn about because when I first got it and I'm messing around and it's starting to feed back, I'm like, well, I want to get rid of the feedback, so I'm going to take that anti-feedback control and turn it all the way up because I want more or less feedback. Well, it doesn't function like that. It's a sweep control, so what you do is you just kind of go when you find where in the sweep that the feedback node is happening and it gets rid of it, then it notches it out. Um, there's a couple of different, uh, and there's also a phase control on here as well, and that's a good you know, uh, escape pod, if you will, if you're starting to feed back, you're like, oh my God, I don't want to get rid of it. You can press that button and that's like a, a way to kind of help you out lickety split. Um, there's also some effects on board here. Usually I just like a little bit of a, a, a little bit of reverb. So right now I just have it on a, the first reverb sound. There's some different reverbs on here. There's some delay. And then 
you can put a little, I'm gonna go back to uh, just the reverb setting and there's a second bank of effects, okay folks? So I can engage that by pressing this and right now, I just have a little bit of a slapback echo in addition to the reverb and you just hear a little bit of that. There we go. There's also, you know, there's a flanger on here if you want to get a little spacey. There's also some choruses. Ooh. Anyways, you get the idea. Uh, mostly what I like to do is I said, I just have a little bit of reverb on, and then maybe a little bit of that slap. Okay. So of the three different iterations of the loud box, actually there's, there's a little bit more than that now. I mean, you consider the Mini. <clears throat> the Mini is a 60 watt amplifier. It has two channels. All these amps have two channels, and they also have the ability to plug both an XLR and a quarter-inch cord in. So you could basically accompany yourself. They could serve as like a little mini PA for a solo artist to be able to play in one channel and a sang through another channel or plug another instrument in, depending on what you want to do. Um, the newest one is the, the, the mini charge, because you can actually charge it up and get 10 hours of untethered power. So as I like to say, no food court or campfire will be saved from you and your guitar, uh, perhaps with a microphone. Um, so you can plug your guitar into this channel, you can plug your uh, microphone into the other channel, there's a little reverb from one channel, there's reverb and a little bit of chorusing available on this, and the Loudbox Mini Charge also has a Bluetooth capability, so you can pair your iPhone or whatever device you have that you wanna play tracks through and be able to play along with tracks or uh, whatever the case may be, or just put some tunes on during break time, whatever you want to do as well. Um, there's also the Loudbox Artist, which is uh, slightly smaller than this. It's a little bit less watts. It's only 120 watts as opposed to 160. So what these amps all have in charge, or all have in common, excuse me, with the performer and the artist especially, with their effects, you can also get on the um, Tone Deck preamp, which is located down here on the floor. Uh, which has the ability to kind of access both of the different effects, uh, both effect A and effect B that exists on the Loudbox uh, artist and performer, uh, in addition to having a boost feature. So you, there's a, a, you can set it to have a little boost so that when you hit it, you get go into a lead or whatever the case may be. You know, you're with a bunch of friends and you're playing a spirited version of Kumbaya and you want, <laughs> and you want to deafen the other individuals in your acoustic uh, uh, ensemble and step above with a little volume so you can play. You can do that and you can set the amount of boost on the side of the, the preamp. Uh, and there's also a nice pre uh, uh, compressor on there as well, uh, which really sounds good. And it's a very natural sounding compressor. It doesn't do that, you know, real grab and squish thing as I like to refer the compressors do. It, it, you can set it so it's very, very musical so that as I like to say, I like to set a compressor so that I feel it more than you hear it. So it just, it just makes it a little bit easier to play an acoustic instrument so that you're not struggling so much to, to have the, the high notes be as voluminous as the lower notes. Um, so all that stuff works out great. So anyways, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Kind of an overview of uh, how I like to view the, um, the acoustic Fishman world. They make a bunch of different pickup options. Uh, the Matrix Infinity is, is my personal favorite. Uh, they make sound hole pickups that are great. Uh, they make combinations of both uh, the Matrix Infinity pickup with a microphone that's inside. Uh, all kinds of different options. So you can certainly, you know, from the rare earth pickups and so on, they have a bunch of different options to use depending on your needs and your tastes. Um, as I said, I kind of, my, my favorite scenario is using a Matrix Infinity pickup uh, through the uh, Aura Spectrum DI. 
I, then I go into a performer, and then there's a, a mixed DI out of the back of this so I can still hear the effects, and I go straight into the PA. There's also the new um, uh, line array system called the SA330X, uh, which is a 330-watt, two-channel standalone unit. You can also add a four-channel uh, expansion unit, so you have six channels total, and then you can also get a subwoofer for that. So at home, what I do is I go into my Martin, into my Spectrum Aura DI, into my performer, out of that, into one of the channels of the um, subwoofer reinforced SA330X, and it's just, it's the acoustic sound of doom and destruction. So, anyways, you get the idea. Fishman makes glorious stuff. You can get that all here at Gear for Music. I hope this was instructive, and thanks for tuning in, folks. Greg Koch here on behalf of our Fishman friends. Adios. Adios. <laughs>